All right, so the second to last module is on um, electromagnetic modalities. And um, we could also say it's on all the modalities that we're not going to practice in lab. So um, we're going to go over them briefly, um, diathermy, lasers and light, um, UV and um, biofeedback. Um, we're not going to go into great detail. I mostly just want you to be aware of what they are. Um, know the indications, contraindications, and precautions for each one. And um, the exam um, is going to be largely focused on traction, compression, and integration of modalities. And there will be a few um, questions about um, EMR modalities, but they will be focused on um, the learning objectives. And you take a look at the learning objectives, you'll see that they're, um, it's pretty basic um, for this module. So the, um, for diathermy, it can be classified with thermal agents as it is in the book or with electromagnetic agents. And um, because we're not doing it in lab, I chose to put it in this module. So the, um, on the exam, there'll be a few questions about EMR, mostly traction and compression. And then you'll have two case studies where you're given a, um, you're given a case study and you're asked to create a treatment plan combining a certain number of modalities and you need to um, justify why you used the modalities that you did and the order that you did them in. So um, you could conceivably use one of the EMR modalities in your case study, um, not like on the practical, but it's the written exam, um, if you have a good reason for doing it. because. Um, we're not using the machines, you could, you could um, write it out in your case study. <clears throat> so diathermy and learning objectives for this module, I want you to be able to briefly name and describe the different types of diathermy, um, indications, contraindications, and precautions. And um, there are some precautions to the treating clinician with diathermy, and I want you to know about those. So pretty basic. <clears throat> so diathermy, um, it's from the Greek word means through heating. Um, it's basically um, shortwave and microwave electromagnetic energy to produce heat and other physiological changes within the tissues. It can be continuous or pulsed. Both shortwave or microwave can be continuous or pulsed. Um, for the thermal um, modalities, the temperature increase in the treated tissue is determined by the field intensity the duty cycle, so the percentage of time on and off, just like ultrasound, and the tissue type and the distance from the patient. So here's our electromagnetic spectrum. Um, the visible is the little rainbow there. The um, things to the left of visible are lower frequency, so um, longer wavelength, lower frequency. And to the right of the visible spectrum are the um, higher frequency. So that's where UV, X-rays, and gamma rays go. So um, diathermy is short waves and microwaves, and short waves are in the radio wave range, um, and that is the, um, the reason why short wave diathermy can interfere with um, radio frequency communication and um, other electronic devices. So we'll talk about that when we talk about precautions. So um, diathermy, one of the advantages of it is it's able to heat more deeply than hot packs, just like ultrasound is. But unlike ultrasound, it is um, specific for larger areas. Um, also, short shortwave diathermy is not reflected by bone, so it doesn't have the risk of periosteal burning like ultrasound does. So it's actually absorbed by bone. And um, so it's one of the reasons why it can be used to um, treat things like osteoarthritis. So there are some different types of applicators. Um, the shortwave um, diathermy has some inductive coils. They're largely used for extremities. There's a, a, the apparatus has a way of wrapping around either um, an arm or a leg. Um, and it's Usually with diathermy, because you're heating through the tissues, there has to be some way to um, surround the tissue. 
There are some inductive coil dithermy applicators that are only on one side. These are two examples of them where um, the one coil creates the um, field and you put that close to the patient. Um, there are capacitive plates in shortwave diathermy where the patient actually becomes part of the electrical circuit to heat the tissue so there is a plate on either side of the patient. And then um, the microwave um, diathermy applicator is called a magnetron and it uses an antenna to produce a high frequency alternating current. So the thermal effects of diathermy, um, you can heat large deep areas of tissue you can increase circulation in superficial tissues and you can increase extensibility in deeper tissues. Non-thermal effects, um, you increase microvascular perfusion and you can alter cell membrane function and cellular activity just like with pulsed ultrasound. So um, you can sort of think of diathermy as, um, you, while you have a larger area than you can really address with ultrasound and diathermy is a way to do some of those same thermal and non-thermal effects. So I like this chart from the book where it shows the um, effects on different tissues. So it has ultrasound at the bottom um, for comparison. So we know that ultrasound um, preferentially heats tissues with a lot of collagen, so muscle and tendon and ligament. And you can see on this little graph not very much effect on fat because it doesn't have a lot of collagen, but a lot on muscle and tendon and ligament aren't on this chart. But um, microwave diathermy has um, also effect on fat, uh, on muscle, um, but it has an effect on fat as well. So that's something to think about and we'll talk about it when we talk about precautions. Capacitive plate diathermy um, has a, a big effect on fat, uh, medium on muscle, and it's the only one that has effect on bone. So um, if you're trying to um, affect bone in some way, bone healing or um, Osteoarthritis is an application for this. Um, capacitive plate short rib diathermy is what you're looking to use. Um, inductive coil, very similar to the profile of ultrasound, not a lot of effect on fat, but um, definitely some effect on muscle. So the applications for thermal diathermy are pain control, um, accelerated tissue healing, decreased joint stiffness, and increased joint range of motion. Um, Non-thermal effects, control of pain and edema, um, soft tissue, nerve, and bone healing, and improvement of osteoarthritis symptoms. So um, there are a lot of nice effects, actually, if you have it available. Um, general contraindications, any implant or, or transcutaneous stimulator like pacemakers, deep brain stimulators, um, indwelling defibrillators, pain pumps, insulin pumps, don't use it because it can affect all those things. And pregnancy, do not use it with pregnant women because it can um, be a uh, bad effect on the um, developing fetus. So you particularly do not want to use it in the lower abdominal or pelvic regions um, because the distribution um, of the electromagnetic field isn't constrained in the body. So it can be it can go anywhere within the um, patient's body. It can also affect the therapist, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So for um, thermal diathermy, um, contraindications include metal implants. So if you wanted a deep heating treatment with metal implants, you could use ultrasound as long as you didn't have joint cement involved with it or, or plastic parts, um, but not diathermy. A malignancy is a contraindication around the eyes and testes. I don't know why you do that, but there you go. Um, and growing epiphyses is a contraindication for diathermy. So um, even, even though it has effects for bone healing, you don't want to use it um, on a child because of its effects on growing epiphyses. Um, Non-thermal diathermy, um, you do not want to use it to heat um, deep tissue or internal organs. Um, you don't want to use it as a substitute for conventional therapy for edema and pain. So a lot of times um, we're kind of, we're going to stick with the basics and maybe you might use non-thermal diathermy if those didn't work. And, and of course pacemakers, electronic devices, and metal implants are a no-no for 
um, diathermy. So precautions, it can mess up other electronic or magnetic equipment. So don't take it near your computer or your Fitbit or your watch or, um, or any um, implant in somebody's body. So um, that, that's a big, um, that's the thing with diathermy is um, it can mess up things around it. Obesity is an issue because of that chart we looked at, its effect on fat. If someone who's obese has more fat. You can actually have burns with um, increased fatty tissues in the body um, with diathermy, so it's a precaution. Um, if you were using it on somebody's hand, um, that might not be an issue, but um, deeper tissues in the body, it might be an issue. Um, copper bearing IUD, it can affect that um, metal um, inside the uterus. You don't want to do that. Um, the non-thermal um, precautions, pregnancy and skeletal immaturity, those are also contraindications, so I don't know why they're listed separately as precautions. But um, the adverse effects is... Uh, particularly in fat layers, you can get burns. Um, you want to keep the skin dry because that can um, accelerate the burn effect. So for therapists, um, you want to avoid diathermy, and particularly if you're pregnant. But even if you're not pregnant, you want to stay from one to two meters away from continuous diathermy and from 30 to 50 centimeters away from all shortwave diathermy. So um, it can be a risk for the therapist as well. So that's one of the reasons why um, you, why diathermy uh, is not used as often in um, therapy settings. Um, you definitely want to avoid it if you're pregnant. In the book, um, they go into the application technique you are not necessarily going to be responsible for that, but um, it's there as a reference if you need it. Um, and it talks about the different types of applicators and positioning. So um, that's all we're going to talk about with diathermy. And just know that it does have some good effects. Um, there is some good research to support it, but um, you should be familiar with the indications, contraindications, and precautions.